technology, a new social order, the promise of tomorrow or perhaps the promise made by one to another about the fruits of tomorrow. Some believe that various artists throughout the 20th century are greatly indebted to the technological and political and social beliefs and promises of their time that the movements and events which occurred during the artist practicing years, greatly influenced the outcome of their work. Unfortunately we won't be able to inspect, digest and interpret all those artists. So I've chosen one special artist. He is an Australian raised performance, sculpture and body modification artist, he is none other than Steeluk. Stila Corstelios Arcadius was born in Limassol on Saturday the 19th of June, 1946 but soon after moved to Sunshine, Melbourne where he has spent most of his life and in 1972 he legally changed his name to Steeluk. It seemed during his years spent studying the arts at both Monash and Melbourne universities that he didn't quite fit in with the artistic schooling trends of the time and didn't actually create anything until many years after graduating. He spent his initial years, tunneling his ideas that surrounded the expansion of the human capacity and his notions around the body through performative-based practices. He now has 27 suspension works to his name as well as constructing varying mechanical extensions for the body, such as his third arm and the muscle machine. He has also explored the amplification of bodily behaviors through oral technology. This was heavily emphasized in the Third Hand project. Now before we begin to dissect the artist work and all that has contributed to this work, we will look into two social movement and philosophical beliefs. The first one of these movements comes under the banner post-humanism slash post-human. Post-humanism or post-human is a well-established belief which aims to realize a human or entity moving beyond what is commonly considering human-like. This term has its origins rooted into history via various people of the science fiction, futurology, contemporary art and philosophy communities around the globe. Those who study this field, do so in regards to questions in relation to ethics and justice language and trans-species communication, social systems and the intellectual aspirations of interdisciplinarity, now on to transhumanism. Transhumanism has its eyes firmly aimed towards the improvement and modification of the human condition through any and all emerging sciences, such as genetic engineering, digital technology and bioengineering. This movement is trying to move beyond our current notions of body modification that being of compensation for human function which had deteriorated through the aging process, disease or everyday accidents. They are aiming for excess. Attempting to modify and enhance human longevity, our psychological traits, and bodily senses. If I am to construct a rudimentary conclusion on the differences between post-human slash post-humanism and transhumanism it would be one is interested in tackling the ethical, social, political and environmental issues that arise when transforming the human experience via various technology and the other being heavily invested in the transformation of the human experience through said technologies. The question may arise, what is the connection between the artist and the movements I've just discussed? To explore these connections I will be digesting two of Steelix's well-known works and works that I find myself having a relatively strong response to. These two works will be, The Third Arm and The Ear on the Arm. The first of the works we will be investigating will be the third hard piece. This work was constructed out of aluminium, stainless steel, acrylic, latex electronics, electrodes, cables and batteries and was designed to mimic the dimensions of his right hand. Initially the arm was conceived as being a semi-permanent attachment but unfortunately due to skin irritation from the electrode gel and the weight of the hand, support structure and battery pack, it couldn't be worm for extended periods of time and transformed it into a special performance piece. The artist finished the work in 1980 and began using it in his practice from 1980 to 1998. 
the work has now come to be seen as taking a different perspective on prosthesis. This seems to take on two positions. The first one being that the attachment isn't about replacing something which has gone through a stage of deterioration but rather adding to the human body and expanding on its capacities. The other position, looks at prosthesis not as being a lack of something but rather as Stelic calls it a symptom of excess. He also played around with amplified body signals and sounds. Another aspect of this work which I found of relative interest was the artist trying to use three hands to draw or write. After a series of this performance he achieved writing two words. Decadence and devolution. The problem he faced with achieving this was compensating for the space between each hand and having to use one hand to write every third letter. This quick description of the third hand leads us greatly onto the next piece. This is the ear on the arm. The initial project started off with him wanting to place a third ear either in front of or beside the right ear but due to the delicacy of the facial anatomy and therefore the complications that could possibly arise from said location, it was decided to place the work onto his arm. It wasn't until 2006, ten years after the initial thought, when he given funding from a London production company and convinced three surgeons from America, that a relief of an ear was attached. To date he has so far only gone through two surgical procedures. From here, to complete the ear, the helix is needed to be lifted for a flap to be created, the growth of a soft hair lobe using his own stem cells. He is also wanting to implant a small microphone which will be connected to a wireless transmitter that allows for the ear to be internet enabled. From here, the ear will become a transmitting device for people from anywhere in the world to be able to hear what it's absorbing. If that doesn't sound like it's taking it far enough, he is thinking of another possibility. Transforming it with Bluetooth capabilities which will be connected to a speaker and receiver that is implanted into his mouth. This means the artist will can be called via the ear and the sound will be picked up via his head. If he then opens his mouth, all those in close vicinity will be able to hear the person on the other end of the line. The notions which greatly resonate through this work for him is the breaking down and reconstructing the capabilities of the human body. He sees this as extending the body's ability to communicate beyond the local space it occupies and through agents in a multitude of positions. This could also suggest the dissolving of the notion of singularity or the control of the individual. When agents beyond the body can now invade, inhabit and emanate in various forms and responses from that host, the possibility of losing a sense of control or a sense of autonomy arises. From my brief examination of this explorative artist, one could arrive at the conclusion that his work is greatly referencing and investigating the explosion of scientific research and discovery but as well as technological advances which have been made in fields and subfields of the sciences but as well as instruments that have come forth from the military complex and entertainment industries. He is exploring notions of an obsolete body which allows for interference from external agents to the expansion of the human capacity. Expansion in the form of improvement. In a sense, taking over what nature has done since time immemorial and improving human intelligence, human longevity, our psychological traits as well as our psychical conditioning. Although I don't completely agree with many of the ideas being presented, one can arrive at the conclusion that the artist practice has been greatly informed by the advances in technology as well as the promises of tomorrow.